If you're a motion designer, you're probably staring at your computer screen all freaking day. So in this project breakdown, I'm going to show you how to implement this analog style into your projects and rescue you from your screen for just a little while. Let's go. All of my projects starts out with a sketch. I chose the pixelated mouse cursor as my subject because I think the idea of hand drawing a digital element is interesting. I then downloaded an illustration created by Stefan Paranov on Noun Project and imported it into After Effects. I turned the shapes into 3D, set it to C4D mode, extruded the shapes and added some rotation to the mouse cursor. The composition is set to 5 seconds and 8 frames per second to get that stop motion look. I set the colors of the sides to different shades of light gray so it's easier to paint over later. I exported the animation as a PNG sequence and laid them out frame by frame on InDesign and then finally printing them. I decided to use colored paper so that it will add an existing texture to the artwork. After that is where all the fun begins. I first tried painting the whole frame in pastels, but quickly realized that it won't be accurate enough for the pixelated elements. So I took out some markers and after some testing, I landed on using blue and green markers for the size of the mouse cursor, leaving the middle alone as it already has an interesting texture from the print. Now it's time for factory mode. I put on some music and started to paint the rest of them. Despite my kitten's best effort to interrupt me, I managed to finish painting all the frames in about an hour's time. Once the paintings are done, we can now scan them. When scanning, make sure your DPI is set to 300 for good quality, and that the placement of the paper is consistent. Once scanned, you can import them into After Effects, crop the images, and separate them frame by frame. You'll have to set the scale and position for the first page, then you can repeat them for the next pages. And there we have it. From here, you can add some final touches. I cropped the image a little bit to hide some of the black frames that were showing, and darken the overall animation a little bit. I also sped up the animation to make it a bit more dynamic. Okay, that's it. It was such a joy working on this little project and I hope you got some ideas out of it. Let me know in the comments below if you plan to make any projects with this analog technique. See you next time.